This video will prove to you that Hallelujah Scriptures money launders gold and silver and how they did it. Let us begin. Let's simply begin by looking at a couple of definitions. Now, when we are looking at the definition of money laundering, this is what we are talking about. It's the concealment of the origins of illegally obtained money, typically by means of transfers involving foreign banks or legitimate businesses. And then they have in quotes, he was convicted of money laundering and tax evasion. So down here a little bit more, it says something of this nature. Money laundering involves disguising financial assets so they can be used without detection of the illegal activity that produced them. Through money laundering, the criminal transforms the monetary proceeds derived from criminal activity into the funds with an apparently legal source. Okay, so let us go into what is considered money laundering. Is this the same thing? It involves disguising financial assets so they can be used without detection. I think that's the same thing they just had. Okay, let's take a quick look at what is wire fraud. Now, wire fraud is a little bit different. But let us see what it says wire fraud is. Wire fraud occurs when someone uses wire, and that is the internet, radio or television communications to defraud others. They can include sending false information in order to obtain money or property or sending threats to harm another person. Wire fraud is punishable by up to 20 years in prison and can result in a fine of up to $250,000. So what is an example of wire transfer funds? You've Ask for a confirmation code before withdrawing funds. This is fake. You never need a confirmation code or money transfer. That means nothing to us. Now, let's take a quick look at the gold purchase first by the Hallelujah Scriptures. And this is the date right here. This was October 14th, 2020. Now, some of the backstory on this is this was during the great... Um, the great event of 2019, 2020, and 21. Now, Miss Deborah Wessel, or Weiss, believed that the end of the world was here, and I have firsthand information of where the gold was delivered to. I know the person, interviewed the person who received this gold. Now, let's continue on, and let's take a quick look at what she bought. Now, up here, we have a Hallelujah Scriptures, shipping to Hallelujah Scriptures, and this is what she bought right here. 50 grams Valcambi gold, Combi bar, $3,268. 15 of those suckers. So we have a total of 52,267.58 in gold that was purchased. Now, it was purchased because in the event of 2019, 2020, when she thought the end of the world was going to happen, she drained the, one of the accounts of Hallelujah Scriptures. The gold was delivered to then one of her shipping agents. The shipping agent then took it to Adele Horvath. Where it's going from there, I'm about to show you. Now, let's take a quick look at the Hallelujah Scriptures um, silver. And I want to go back to the very first page of the gold, just so everybody sees exactly where this was shipped to. And again, focus on this date. And we have the order number. And uh, so that's October 14th. Our silver order was on October 14th, so four days prior to this. This is where the silver is going to go to. This is the order number, right? Now, this in of itself isn't um, completely wire fraud and money laundering. But what we're about to see is where they sold this stuff to. Now, she's not very good at money laundering or wire fraud because she's left trails in the landfill for a while but take a look at this she bought one ounce ash ashy silver rounds so spot silver price at the time 2438 they charged them 2677 uh deborah wessel weiss bought ten thousand thirty eight dollars and 75 cents worth right there and so again it was shipped here and now let's take a quick look at where this begins now where did this gold and silver go? So I would like to take a look at a couple of wire transfers that will tell us exactly where it went. And for privacy concerns, I've put out anybody's name. So this 
these were very, very interesting. So this one, I'd like to notice the date. The date on this one is uh, 8-16, 2022. Um, Cynthia, is, we'll just call her Cynthia, is who bought the $3,000. Okay, now hold on. Now, this one came in on 8-16, right? $480. And it was uh, Lewis was the one who uh, bought this thing. Now, this is where it started tipping us off that this is when she started hustling the gold and silver. The code is GNS. And um, again, I took out Lewis's information, so nobody can see it. Nobody can say I'm throwing anyone under the bus except for Deborah Wessel, who deserves to be in a prison cell. Okay, so GNS, we have it right there. So there's a track. We have gold and silver. There's one. And the first one was the exact same date. Now, let's take a quick look at 818 right here. This guy bought $17,990 worth of gold and silver. And um, this is who it is, whoever this feller is, um, Gaeto, Gaetano. And um, I, again, I blanked this stuff out. Now, let's take a look right here, right? This is payment for gold and silver donation, GNS, right? So these guys are have this thing all seem coded, right? It's like the Hallelujah Scriptures decided to hustle off this gold and silver, and they had a couple of people that they knew would probably buy it, and then they sent this out, and they said, make sure when you put in your payment, you put GNS for the donation, right? So there's 17990 Now, before we go too further, I want us to go back to this number, 52267 and then also this number. 10,000. So we're looking a little over $60,000 of precious metals in this particular money laundering instance. Now, this last guy that just did 17,990. Let's take a look at this one. This is 825, exact same time, $3,000. Um, this lady's name was Lori. This was her bank. And um, this one said purpose donation. This one did not say it, but it was, they were all doing bank wires. Incoming bank wires at this time. Sorry, that's my dogs. Nothing I can do. They make crazy sounds. Okay, so purpose donation. This was all about the same time. And um, again, let's take a look at this guy right here. This is 8-16-2022. $9,000 came in. And they have, uh, this is David, somebody or the other. And they have Emily, what I think, I don't know who that was, but they have it for GNS, gold and silver. So this is when they were dumping the gold and the silver. Now let's take a look again. We have somebody else, 816, $15,000, okay? Um, this was uh, Arthur. Arthur got a good deal on some gold and silver. He had, uh, this is the code, G and S, gold and silver, right? Plus two books, <laughs> two books. So the guy donated $15,000 to get some gold and silver and ask for two books as well, or that he just ordered two books as well as paying for the gold and silver. So that is the that is where the gold and silver went. Now, when you are talking about wire fraud, any of this illicit funds, this gold and silver was purchased with stolen donation funds. This drained the supposed scriptures account that was supposed to be giving away free Bibles, which they never ever did, and they. Um, now, when they sold this back, that becomes the wire fraud. All of these transactions that are bank wired, they're, they're, they're doing bank wires. So they have received almost, um, they, what they did is because Deborah Wessel is such a bad business person, she lost $500 because when she freaked out and bought this and figured out she couldn't get it to herself in New Zealand, then she had to hold on to it and decided she was going to hustle this later. Then she hustles it and she lost $500 of the donator's money. But that is what you define as money laundering. But because she is so bad at money laundering, she didn't get it out of her account. She ended up coming right back into her account. So um, we have witness statements of this entire thing um, of who received this gold and the silver and this is where majority, it looks like, of the gold and silver went. I don't know if there's any stuff out there that is left. But um, that is the classic case of money laundering. So this is, I'm going to add this into the evidence entry 
that I have, and I'm going to um, continue on with the SFO investigation and try to get everybody as much information as possible as we are breaking this stuff down. So thank you guys very much for taking a look at this stuff. Please let people know about this, right? If, if you guys, if, if the Torah community still promotes the Hallelujah Scriptures, whoever is still promoting the Hallelujah Scriptures doesn't really care about their congregation. Because if you're sending your people into the wolves of the lion, the mouths of lions into the wolf's den, and you never know what Deborah Wessel is going to do to them, if they just buy a Bible and they get their Bible, wonderful. But a lot of people get invested into this somehow and end up losing a tremendous amount of money. And as you guys have seen, the spending habits of Deborah are enormous amounts of food. We have prescription drugs. We have RV repair stuff. We have all sorts of stuff. But we don't have any orphans, widows, and lepers. And that's what we're missing is that. That makes this entire thing fraud along with identity theft, along with racketeering, along with wire, everything. There's, there's like a kasu list of things this woman has done. So we need to get this investigated. We need to get the houses that are in the names of them returned back to the Hallelujah Scriptures because for years and years and years, people were throwing their donations into orphans, widows, and lepers and to give Bibles away. And none of that money made it to where it would have gone. I was talking to a brother today and I said, what a difference the world would have been if Deborah Wessel or Deborah Weiss had not have stolen money for 13 years. If the world could have had those Bibles, imagine the lives that could have been changed. Imagine the souls that could have read the correct, tran the correct translations of things in, in the great way that, that they have it, right? But she withheld the word of our creator. She created a cult. She has Sister Shalom or Brother This and This and That. It is a cult. And she has created a cult and made a cult following, but nobody has made her accountable for what they just give her. They just believe that this woman quoting scriptures wasn't evil. Well, there's something very, very evil in the bank account records of Deborah Wessel. Things I'm looking at right now that there is no explanation for. Why is there almost a $600 charge for a Dama Matrix hooker in New Zealand? What is she doing there spending the people's money at a, that kind of a store? Those are questions she needs to answer because she was taking money on the backs of all these people. And now you're seeing her lifestyle exposed because you can't do this to the word of our creator. You can't do this. This isn't fearing Elohim. This isn't, this isn't mastering sin. This is letting sin overtake you. And you've stomped on the backs of people for all these years. The SFO needs to arrest you, Deborah Wessel and Ken Wessel. Ken Weiss, Deborah Weiss, whatever your names are. Have a good day.